so you can show other young people in the world that it is possible to initiate stuff and it is really important for the Israeli dance community which is a actually the the first topic that you wanted me to talk about it was from the young uh, community to the world right so um i have a lot a lot of things that i can say about that but i think that the most important issue is that if we want younger people to dance i think we need more younger Uh, teachers, more younger instructors, more younger Marquidim, and I think that it is a great example what you see when you go to Latin America, because I was in Brazil, I was in uh, Argentina, I was in, uh, in places like this, I saw that in a lot of uh, Jewish communities, uh, and also uh, Noar, like Maccabi and Shomer Atzair and places like this, you can see that the, the Marquidim are really young they are close to the age of the of their uh, students of this of their dancers and this is something very very important and i think the first message i want to give the young com the young community is that we need to have more teachers our age and younger than us because this will give us a chance to um, build a new generation this will give us the chance to have people that, uh, my, my age is 36, okay? For me to go to work with children, I think it's also already too late, but I can, also, I can work with people that are 30 or 25. But if someone is 25, they can work with someone who's 20. And if you are 20, you can work with someone who's 16. And that way you have a closer age relation and you can look at your madrich, you can look at your teacher and you can think to yourself, I can be like him. He's not too far away from me in the, in the age and in the, uh, in the vibe, in the atmosphere. If I look at someone that is just a few years older than me, I can say in a few years, I can be like him. If someone is 15 and he's looking at someone that is, let's say, 30, then is, is twice my age, it will be more difficult for me to relate to him. So that's the first message I wanted to, to deliver because the more young teachers we have, the more young dancers we'll have. I think it makes sense. I hope it makes sense. This is something that I personally really believe in. And I'm going to say something that if the, if the older generation is watching, uh, maybe you will be a little bit angry at me for saying this, but I really, really think that the big message from the young generation to the rest of the world is that probably, probably uh, Israeli dance is going to change a little bit. Um, and this is natural. This is okay. The reason I'm saying this is that for us to stay updated and for us to be able to attract younger audiences, we need to bring them something that is relevant. So if you look at TikTok, if you look at places like this, you see different kind of movements. You see something a little bit much different than let's say uh, open cross and the Yemenite step, okay? So when you look at places like this, you see um, like Fortnite, like, you need to see, to see and learn what the younger gen generation is exposed to and reflect that into social dancing, because what is Israeli dance? It is social dancing. The main, the main thing about Israeli dancing that makes it perfect for people is that it is social. It's not something that you do to perform. It's not something that you do to win a contest. This is something that you do to do it with other friends. This is something to do to feel like a community. This is a social thing. So. Um, it needs to be relevant to the audience that we want to bring. So I know, I know that some people will say, but you know, you cannot change Israeli dance, right? This is something holy. You cannot touch this. This is, uh, and I understand. I really think that the fundamentals of Israeli dance are important to keep. 
but I also think that we need to decorate it with uh, something more up to date, something more uh, relevant for the younger generation. And this is my message um, from the young generation to the world, I think, that Israeli chain, Israeli dance will probably look a little bit different in the future, and it, it is okay. We need to not only accept it, we need to, um, let's say, push it forward and uh, give the younger gen uh, generation all the support that we can. As a young leader, how do you manage to promote the Riku de Young? How do you get more people to get involved? Um, to okay, get this is a great more dancers in the community. This is a great question. And I think that the the best thing that we can do to to promote younger teachers, to help other teachers, to connect with other teachers, to deliver Israeli dance to the rest of the world is to show the world that it is there you know like right now everyone is in a quarantine social distancing you have to stay at home you cannot actually dance this is a great opportunity actually a great great opportunity to connect on a personal level with people for example i think that most of us the younger generation of a, of teachers are actually friends this is something that you didn't use to see. And, and, and again, if you are from the older generation, excuse me for saying this, but uh, in the older generation of Israeli dance teachers, most of the people were competitive and there, there was a lot of uh, cliques and camps and stuff like that. And I think that right now with the younger generation and uh, a lot of the people that are here can agree with me, like Eli and Yuval and Almog and uh, Eran, who is my, Eran Beaton, I don't think he's here, but he's a great friend of mine. And we are all friends to begin with, because I think we need to, we feel like we are together in the same place. And we need to keep that. We need to still be in touch. We need to keep talking to each other. We need to stay together and bring more people. This is uh, how, as a young teacher, I can try and push it forward. This is very interesting what you're saying. Uh, we agree with everything. And we think that, yes, uh, we have to change the things, uh, how there are things made right now, so we can get more young teachers and young dancers to continue with this. And we want to talk a little bit about your other uh, theme. So how was the whole process from you, for, like from dancing being a hobby, turned to work for you? Okay, so my story is a little bit unique because I don't think it was ever a hobby for me. I love Israeli dance. I was born with it because my father was also Marquid. Um, and since I was nine years old, I started teaching. So for me, the transition from dancing to teaching was so early. I was so young that I never felt like I'm doing this for a, a hobby. But, and this is something I really want to uh, emphasize, okay? This is something really important. Um, if you love Israeli dancing, if you really, really love it and you want to make it something more than a hobby. I think it's wise and clever uh, not, not to make it your full-time job. And I have, I have the privilege and the right to say it because I was a full-time in Israeli dancing for the last 12 years and I'm I've been doing great, okay? I have had a lot of dancers in my classes and I, I was able to make a living just for is, from Israeli dancing. But um, right now, as you see, as you know, with everything that is going on, um, you really need to have something stable uh, that you can do just for money, just to, to support your family. And that will actually help you become a better market, I think, because you, when you don't need to think about, I have 10 people more 
tonight. I have less 20 people. This will be the money I bring home. If you have a, an opportunity to think about it in a different way, um, I'm doing it for community. I'm doing it because I want people actually to dance. And I have a regular job where I can make my money. I think that if you ask me um, between a hobby or a job, it's okay to do it as a job, but I think that uh, if you do it full time, it will make you a little bit more worried about other things than dancing. You have to worry about logistics. You have to worry about paying rent. You have to worry about uh, the weather. Maybe not enough people will come because it's raining too much. And it will affect the way you interact with the people. You have to, so you have to be really strong. You have to be really um, powerful to, to not um, project that to the people. To, to still make everybody happy, to still make everybody laugh and stuff like that. Um, so that, that, that's my opinion right now. I think that, uh, the, again, the corona pandemic is giving us an opportunity to, to think about things and uh, to try to do things a little bit differently, maybe a little bit better. And um, so if you want to go and support Israeli dancing, this is great. This is amazing. And do it for the right reasons. This is very interesting because most of us think that we can have money doing this. And the really effort is like, we need to work as personal and take this to this professional thing in, in parentheses, because this is like most a hobby besides a, uh, a, a really job. Like we're most of us doing this as an art. So in the love for, for the Rico de Yam, and we thought that, that that's very interesting. And so- it, And it is really interesting how you're saying that if you make this like your full job, you'll keep, like you'll take out the love and the passion of it because you're worried about the other things. So I think, especially in dancing and teaching, it's really interesting. It's really important to always have this passion through your students and for you to actually enjoy what you're doing. Actually, you, there are ways to keep your passion, even if it's a, your profession, okay? This is not like black or white. You just need to know what your personality is like. So for some people, it will be okay. For other people, it can maybe make them not want to do it anymore when it becomes a profession, when it becomes a commitment uh, for supporting your family. So this, this, is de this depends on what kind of person you are. And if you are able to find ways to keep the passion, like doing other projects, doing stuff that are related to your job, uh, to keep it more interesting, because I, I've been doing Israel dancing for 30, almost 30 years now. So every time I need to find something, maybe start playing with my guitar when people dance, maybe start doing other creative things just to make it more, to keep my passion alive. Amazing. So what's the main responsibility do you think the new and the next generation has? It's a big one. It's a, it's a giant responsibility. Okay. Uh, I think that the new generation now, I can only uh, say it is equivalent to the first generation of Israeli dancing. And the reason I'm saying it is because I don't know how it is over there for you in Mexico. I know that in most places around the world, um, most of the dancers are beginners or advanced, and there aren't many people in the intermediate, um, in the intermediate level. And this means that the advanced people are really advanced, and the the beginners will never be able to catch up with the advanced so they will be their own groups right now we are thinking about how to bring younger people to the to this field to the field of israeli dancing and i know that if i will bring 20 something 20 years old people to to my class where most of the people in my class are i think between 50 and 70 years old 
they will maybe enjoy it, but it is not something that they will want to do socially. So to keep it social, to the reason I'm saying the responsibility now is even bigger is that the younger generation have, has to start something fresh, something new that you cannot try to connect what you are doing right now with the sessions that are already existing in the field. And I mean, if you, you, you in your age, you won't feel comfortable going every week to a, a, an event where other people are like twice your age or three times your age. You want a community that you have a lot, of co a lot in common with everybody and the age is a very important thing in that matter. So the, the responsibility of the younger generation is actually to start something new. Just the same like it was in the 40s when uh, Israeli dances was just initiated. Okay. okay. Thank you a lot. It was really interesting all what you're saying. So while now we are moving to the Q&A. So if anyone of the who are listening has a question, raise your hand in the participant area so we can give you the work and you can actually ask your question. We know some people wrote in the chat, but this is the time, so it's a little bit more dynamic. So let us know and you can participate directly with the lab. Okay, so Gingy. Hi, lad, Gingy. Hi, um, hi, how are you? Um, how many dances have you made? You know? In total? Yeah, total, yeah. I think around 60. Okay. And then how many times have you been to the US? In Kansas, you know, a lot. I will have to look at my passport, but I think, <laughs> uh, I think around 12 to 15 times, something like that. And how many times have you met Madeline and danced with Madeline? <laughs> with Madeline, wow. <laughs> I, I would say four or five times. Okay. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, just in case you, it wasn't clear, in the participants, there's a little button that says, raise my hand. And that way we could have an order and you could ask your questions. The people who wrote in the chat, if you don't want to talk, let us know and we could read them out loud. So may, maybe Jason, Hedge, Jason and Leanne Hedge, you have a question. If you want, we can read it. We, we can read it. It says that how do we get the older session leaders more energized? They are not sure where we live, what will happen in our area. I don't know where they live, but, but maybe you can tell. So the question was how to get the teachers to be more energized? Yes. yes. In, uh, we live in we live we actually live in Phoenix now, Arizona. Phoenix, Arizona. Okay, okay. How's um, it going, Alad? It's great. It's great. It's great. Uh, I miss I'm you. I'm flying around <laughs> in my ship. Yeah. Uh, so you moved? Oh yeah, we we moved three years ago. Three years ago. Okay. Um, okay. So I think that the best way to keep the people, the teachers, energized is actually to give them a uh, motivation and the way to do that is the way i see it is by giving them more responsibility responsibility is can, can be all kinds of things like if someone wants to uh, be more energized maybe i can say okay so maybe you should think about some new thing that we can do uh, a new advertisement, maybe you want to do something in the programming, maybe uh, you want to go ahead and teach a dance or have more exposure, or maybe you should be in charge of something. Um, I think that when you give people responsibilities, then they feel that they have more to, to bring in. They, have, um, they feel more meaningful and that will uh, project Okay, um, I think that to, to give you a better answer of that, I will need to have a better understanding of the situation. So I think if you want to contact me directly or privately yeah, or something okay. like that, then maybe we can talk longer about that. 
that's all we have. Hey, thank you, Jason. We have one more question in the chat, Elad. I'm gonna read it out. Um, okay, I, ju I just want to show you the younger dancer alive. The yes, Amelia. <laughs> Amelia. <laughs> oh. 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 That's the next generation. <laughs> and you know, you know that whenever I bring her into the show, it doesn't really matter what I say after that. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. She's so beautiful. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I, I got distracted. <laughs> okay. Um, so, Elad, do you see the music in the next generation being less Israeli? Uh, that's a tough one. I think that Israeli dancing should be revolving around Israeli music. Uh, but I don't say that it should be the only music in that kind of event. So if you have some kind of, hold on. So if you have some kind of combination between Israeli and non-Israeli music and that works, and you still are able to keep the main uh, concept of everything uh, Israeli, it's okay because if, you, 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 everyone here knows that we have dances that are not Israeli music. We already have that, okay? Like in line music, in line dances, and some, some partner dances, some circle dances are coming from international music. And it's, it, it's a great part of the Israeli dancing experience. As long as the main concept is Israeli, I don't see a reason why uh, other types of music are not welcome. Amazing. So, Nona, if you want to ask. I do. Good morning, everybody. Hi, lad. Hi, nice Nona. Good morning. Good morning. Um, back to the subject of how to bring youth into the group. First of all, I want to say that when I started, you know, we Israeli dancing wasn't just social. Probably the social was at the bottom. We were all there to dance. I mean, if we were in the middle of a conversation with somebody and, and our favorite dance came on, forget the conversation, we just run and dance. The dancing was what we wanted to do. And we danced with all different ages. It, the age was not an issue. So obviously things have changed. So how do you bring, sure, I, I think we all agree that we need more youth in this because if not, it's going to go away. How do you bring youth into what we're doing? We've another thing. We've so I think, yeah, I, I, I understand what you're asking, and there is no simple answer to that. I think that the only way right now to do something like that is to, to bring youth, is to do it especially for them. I don't see the, a way that you can bring youth to your existing sessions and hmm. in, in, in a way that they will feel like they are a part of it. Because, like, exactly like you said, in the past, Everyone used to dance for dancing. In Israel, it was an ideology. It was something mm -hmm. related to culture. It was something mm -hmm. related to, inher uh, uh, to heritage and to stuff like that. And since then, over the years, it became something a little bit more like entertainment and social. And since it became that way, I don't see a way that it can go back because there is too much a gap between the generations right now. And so the way that you should try to approach bringing younger people, youth especially, is you need some young teachers and they should work with the youth and it should be their own thing. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. I mean, it kind of, it, it makes me sad that we have to have these splintered groups are dancing separate from each other. I think that's, that really does make me sad, but if maybe that's the answer, you may be right. So, and we do have some young teachers here in Vancouver, so maybe yeah, there is a future. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> as you know. Thank you. Thank we you, have, Nona. thank you, Nona. We have one more minute to the Q and A, so Richard, please. Hi, Alad. Uh, it sounds like what you're talking about is something that's been done already by uh, by Hila, Hila Mugdasi. And I went to a couple of uh, 
times where she was having a session, it starts with young people only. And then after a half an hour or so, she says, well, all the old people, please, uh, you know, leave this space so the, the young people can have it. Is this the kind of thing you have in mind? And uh, how, what is your recommendation for others to make it work? Okay. Um, so what, what Eli is doing with Comuna is, uh, is exactly what I'm talking about in the, in the manner of a, a young teacher that is approaching younger dancers. dancers. Um, I never saw uh, the older crowd over there. I never saw it because I, I only went there twice. And every time I, I went there, it was mainly young people together. Uh, I need to see the way that it works. If they can uh, combine, it's great. Maybe if there is a, some a portion of the evening that is, is separated and then it, it goes, it, it combines that it also okay but as long as the younger people have a, a a decent place to get together to become friends to do whatever they want and do it and the platform is dancing then it will it will go on okay perfect so for the last question karina have something so hi Hi, Karina. Alan, Elad, Manish, Mamami. You speak, you say something about the, how to, how to move the beginners to an intermediate. We have a lot of these problems. I know, I mean, you say you are working on it, but what, what was the idea? I mean, how, how do you do it? The way that I do it is, First of all, most large classes in Israel, what they do is that there will be a few halls. And one hall will have the main harkada, and there is another hall that will have the beginner's class. And then after one year, they want to create a new beginner's class. So they tell the beginners, okay, now you can join the harkada. And this is overwhelming. This is intimidating and it's too much for them and most of them will quit. The way that I approach it will be, um, and I, I already did it uh, here just before Corona for the last three years, is I will dedicate a day, especially for beginners. And I will do a beginners only class. And every couple of months, every two or three months, I will start a new beginners group and start to build a bigger group of beginners. After a year or so, I can make most of them, in, most of them will already be intermedi intermediates. Then I can start a new beginners group and start everything from the, and start the entire process from the beginning, but I already have an intermediate group and I will continue teaching them until they will become advanced. And in the end of the line, I will have my own class, a brand new class that is, that was only beginners, people that didn't go to my class because they had to stop going to another class. You know, this is not people that we have competition over. These are people that came to me as beginners and I had the privilege to teach them everything they know and they want to keep going to this class. And I will always bring more beginners just to keep the flow of new people coming in and that way you will have that mm, intermediate class, but still I don't see a way that the intermediates will, or the beginners of the intermediates can go to a big arcada and feel like they belong because it will be too much for them after a year of just learning the basics. Yeah. Thank you so much. That was such a good idea. Thank you. Thank you, Karina. Hello. <laughs> okay, so I know everybody has so many questions. We have a lot of guests. Um, unfortunately, we can't take all of the questions. So Arlen, I see you wanted to add something. Please let us know in the chat. Maybe Alad, you could help us in the chat to respond some questions because um, we know this could go the whole day, but we have our next guest. So Alad, if 
anyone else has any question, you can send it to us and we'll make sure to send it to the, our guest and then uh, get the answer back to you. Uh, Elad, it was amazing. Thank you so much for being here with us. And your baby is beautiful. <laughs> we love Amelia. Thank you. Thank you. I know. Uh, it's, it's been great. I'm happy that you in, invited me and uh, I will stay here for the for a while. And everyone should come tomorrow to the marathon as well. This is yeah. not enough just coming here tonight, okay? Yeah, yeah. thank you. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, love. Gracias.